Hey guys, welcome back to Bob Mupchem. In this video, we're going to be carrying on looking at covalent compounds and specifically Lewis structures, what they are, and how we can work out the structures of novel compounds using a simple set of rules. But as usual, question to get us started with, which allotrope of carbon can conduct electricity and why? Pause the video and have a go. So hopefully you got that as graphite. Remember graphite has the delocalized layer of electrons between the layers, which allows the conduction of charge through the extended covalent compound, allowing it to conduct electricity. So what are Lewis structures? Well, quite simply, these are structures that are a simplification that allow us to show the position of the outer shell electrons in a molecule, as in the electrons between atoms in covalent bonds, as well as those that are just existing on an atom in the form of lone pairs. So looking at Cl2, we can have a few different representations, all of which are going to be valid for IB specification. We have the simple dot and cross diagram in which the crosses represent electrons from one atom and dots represent from another. And here we can clearly see the covalent bond, the sharing of two electrons. We can also just do this all as crosses where crosses uh, exist as electrons. We can do the same where we have all as dots. We can also use a system of lines where each line represents a pair of electrons showing single bonds and the lone pairs on an atom represented by a sideways line. And we can use a very common notation, which is to pair the use of lines to represent covalent bonds and dots or pairs of dots to represent electron lone pairs. Whichever one you choose is fine. I will be using the lines to represent pairs of electrons in this video. Okay, so I'm going to outline a stepwise guide that you can use for drawing simple covalent molecules. Step one is to total the valence electrons. That is add up all the valence electrons of the molecule and we add or subtract based on any charge. If there's a negative charge, we add one electron. If there's a positive charge, we take away an electron. Step two, we choose a central atom. And so this is gonna be the least electronegative atom in the molecule, except in the case of hydrogen, which is never the central atom. For step three, you're going to draw that central atom in the middle with the other atoms surrounding it. You don't need to worry about the orientation just yet, but you will draw a line or two electrons between the central atom and each of those surrounding atoms. Step four, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we complete the octets of all of the outer atoms. If we have any electrons left over, we put those spare ones on the central atom. And lastly, if the central atom does not have a complete octet once we've done this process, then we're going to move, for want of a better word, the lone pairs on the outer atoms to make double or triple bonds. So let's take a look at an example of CH4. So we total up the valence electrons, we have carbon and four times hydrogen, which gives us eight electrons in total or four pairs. Step two, we put the carbon in the center with the four hydrogens around it and join those up with the central atom as in step three. That means we have zero pairs of electrons left. If we go around and check the hydrogens first, we see they all have two electrons, which is what they want. And the central carbon also has eight. So everything's happy here. And that means step four and five are already complete in this simple example. Let's look at the example of CO2, however. So as usual, counting up all of our valence electrons, which gives us 16 or eight pairs of electrons. And we're gonna choose the least electronegative element to go in the center, which in this case is carbon with the two oxygens either side. I'm going to join them with one bond, which takes up two pairs one for each of them. So we're left with six remaining pairs. So I'm gonna follow the step of filling up the octets 
of the outer oxygen atoms, leaving me with no electrons remaining. Both of my oxygen have eight electrons in this situation, however my central carbon is not happy. So now we need to go through step five. What we're going to do here is we're going to think about moving the lone pairs of electrons into the bonds so that they can share those electrons with the central carbon atom, leaving us with two double bonds to each oxygen and two lone pairs. Double checking our electrons again now, we see the oxygen has eight, carbon has eight, and so does the other oxygen. That means that this is at least a viable Lewis structure for CO2. We can apply this to something a little more complicated that potentially has two central atoms, as in hydrazine, N2H2. We're going to total up our electrons just like we've done before, which gives us a total of 12 electrons or six pairs. Now, when we have two potential central atoms, we put them next to each other and we just join them with a bond, taking up one of our pairs of electrons. And as before, we're going to join the outer atoms to those central atoms with one bond, which is one pair of electrons. So we've used up three pairs of our electrons and we have three remaining. So we're going to take those three remaining pairs of electrons and place them on the central atoms. Now, in this case, that leaves us with one nitrogen with a full octet and one without. And so we have to follow step five and bring one pair of those electrons into a double bond between the two nitrogens to be able to satisfy the octets of the two central nitrogen atoms. So once again, this leaves us with a plausible Lewis structure for hydrazine. So it's that time again. On your whiteboards, let's have a go at some questions. First question, draw the Lewis structure for O2. Pause the video to have a go at that. Pop em up. Following those steps, we first get our total electrons, which is 12, which gives us six pairs of electrons. Now we only have two atoms, so we join them together with one pair of electrons, which leaves us five. Now putting those five around the outside leaves us with one oxygen that is just shy of its full octet. So we have to move one of those outer lone pairs into the bond between the oxygen atoms, giving us a double bond. So we have oxygen bonded with a double bond and two lone pairs on each atom. Next question, draw the Lewis structure for HCN and pause the video to have a go at it. Pop them up. Once again, we're going to total the number of electrons for the whole molecule, which gives us 10 electrons or five pairs of electrons and carbon being the least electronegative, we put in the center with nitrogen and hydrogen around it leaving us with three pairs of electrons remaining. Place those around the nitrogen and we see that two of the three atoms are happy, but the carbon in the center can only see four electrons. So we're going to need to move two of those lone pairs off of nitrogen into a bond between the nitrogen and carbon, forming a triple bond between the carbon and nitrogen with one lone pair left on the nitrogen. Have a go at doing the same for C2H4. Pause the video and have a go. Pop them up. Once again, we're always going to total the number of electrons in the molecule, which is 12, which gives us six pairs. Now we've got two central carbon atoms in this molecule, so we're gonna join them with one pair of electrons and then draw our four hydrogens around and join those with a pair of electrons. That uses a total of five altogether, leaving us with one remaining pair of electrons that we need to use. Now we can put that on either one of our carbon atoms. However, it's quite clear that the other carbon atom only has six electrons. So we're going to move that lone pair from the carbon atom on the right into the middle, forming a double bond between those two carbon atoms. Indeed, this process works for octet violating structures such as PCL5. 
and we're just going to go through the process just as we have before. Total up the number of electrons in the molecule, 5 times 7 for chlorine, plus 5 for phosphorus, and we get 40 electrons or 20 electron pairs. Phosphorus is our least electronegative, and then we put our 5 chlorine atoms around in any arrangement, and then join with one pair of electrons between each, leaving us with 15 remaining pairs of electrons. We then start adding in those pairs of electrons around the chlorine atoms around the outside and we get left with zero pairs of electrons. So all of the chlorines are happy but phosphorus has 10 outer electrons but that's okay because we know phosphorus can form that expanded octet. So even in this situation we're still able to produce a valid Lewis structure for the molecule. Hopefully we know by now that practice makes slightly better. So here is a little task of a few structures that you can have a go at to draw and I'll go through the answers in a few moments. So pause the video and take a bit of time to get this practice. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the answers and not explain too much. For number one, we have the nitrogen in the middle with the four hydrogens around. If you didn't include the dative bond, that's completely fine. For number two, SO2, we have two double bonds between the sulfur and the oxygen with two lone pairs on each and one lone pair on the central sulfur atom, it being an octet violator. For number three, we have Xe in the middle surrounded by four fluorine atoms with all of their lone pairs and two lone pairs also attached to the central xenon. For SF6, we have the six fluorines surrounding the sulfur, which is an octet violator in this case, with all the lone pairs. For number five, we have the five chlorines surrounding the central phosphorus, which is also an octet violator. And for number six, we have BH3, which is an octet violator, but in the reduced octet capacity. Okay, guys, so there is a worksheet for this, no practical. And that worksheet combines skills from this lesson and the previous first lesson in this unit. Thanks again for joining me. As always, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. You know the drill. Practice makes slightly better.